Hi, everyone. Have you ever gone to the doctor and just wondered, why do I have to take a stupid blood test? Well, obviously you want to take, get it done so you can see if there's actually something wrong with you. And obviously there's been those times, whether it's been with you or with a family member where they had to take off the, you know, this uh, fleshy part of you that they might think might be cancerous or they might have to remove them all. However, do you wonder what happens to those samples after they've been tested and you know, seeing if they are malignant or not, or if they are cancerous, and then once you're told they're not, you, they really just escape your mind. For most of us, we probably hope that they get sent to that huge facility off in the sky and get burned, mm -hmm. and they are just ridded of the world. However, if you're one of those few that actually has a unique mutation that a doctor could possibly see, you know what? We could probably use this for further research. That might not be the case. They can actually hold your sample for many years to come. And not only that, they can also profit off your sample without you ever seeing a set of that. Today I'm going to be talking about your rights as people when it comes to the samples that are taken from your body. A little about a little bit about cell culture, the experiments that have happened when um, we we're studying about cells. And not only that, two of the more famous cases about cell culture and uh, times where doctors have taken samples without consent from a patient. First, we'll talk about cell culture and the study of researching cells. This was founded by a guy named Sidney Bringer in the 19th century. Now, back then, we didn't really have any of the advanced technology we had. He just was able to keep a dog's heart alive for a few minutes after death. This eventually was laid the foreground for basically all of studying cells, keeping them alive in an artificial environment that wasn't inside a body or anything else. Now, with this progress, obviously, people have made a lot of money. Um, and it's obviously helped out with a lot of people, making new vaccines and new ways to treat cells. And not only that, also being able to help people a lot faster and a lot quicker. Now, most companies will not give out this data since they are, from, um, since they are very secretive about this. But most conservative estimates about uh, be, uh, about companies that make vaccines, estimate the whole progress to be, at the lowest, a multi-million dollar industry. Now, when it comes to taking cells, there is a technical legal requirement for a company or a doctor to make you fill out a consent form. However, if that's only at first they see that it's possible that you can possibly research you. If they can notice right away that, oh, his cells might provide per a perfect example or a perfect specimen. Right then and there, they have to ask you and get you to sign a consent form. However, if you agree to take a blood test and later on they see that um, your cells can have that kind of potential, they don't necessarily have to ask your permission then, since it's technically outside of your body then. And that was ruled with the Supreme Court, saying, stating that once it leaves your body, it's technically not in your possession, and whoever is keeping it at the current time is the rightful owner of that sample. Now, most of you would be thinking, my doctor possibly wouldn't be able to do that. He wouldn't be as cold as to make a huge profit off my own cells or my own tissue samples. However, I'm going to go over the two most famous cases of this happening. The first one being of Henrietta Lacks, who was born in August, August 1st, 1920, and she died on October 4th, 1951. Even though she died, she's still technically alive in a form today. She went to George Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, complaining that she had a knot around her uterus. Most of the doctors there at the current time thought that this was just due to her being pregnant and her getting crowns and signing that she was gonna give birth soon. Though after she gave birth, she noticed that a constant bleeding coming out of uh, her vagina. She then realized that she needed to get help right away. After consulting with some doctors, they finally diagnosed her with cervical cancer. This led her to meet the doctor, George Guy, who was uh, the lead gynecologist at the, at the George Hopkins uh, Medical Center. He ended up uh, taking a look. <laughs> And um, she, he found a huge black mass of tissue 
which he later took a sample of. At that moment, not thinking much. However, when he came back the next day, seeing that the little container holding the sample had completely filled up with the type of malignant cells that were taken from Henrietta's uterus. He later then realized this could be the new frontier for cell culture, since they kept on repopulating themselves. Not only that, he also helped develop new ways of keeping cell culture alive, helping the spread of these cells. So other scientists around the world can use them for future study. Her cells have gone off to help study what happens to cells in radiation. They've been sent into space. They've been used for potential ways of using for cloning. Not only that, they've helped millions of people with a vaccine for polio. So Guy has experienced a lot of great things, and he often sold the uh, vials after realizing how much of a profit they make. As of last night, when I checked to buy a little vial of HeLa cells, it can run you up to around $450, and that's of yesterday. Now, Henrietta didn't fare as well as Dr. Guy did. After being diagnosed, she had, a, uh, at the time, the only kind of radiation treatment a woman of, of her kind could get, which was a plate of radiation put on her stomach. Unfortunately, it didn't help her in the most case that it really destroyed her insides and eventually made her rot away from the inside out. She went on for this for about a couple months and then passed away. Now, if I were her family, I'd be pretty pissed <laughs> since this doctor took a part of my mother and now is making millions. However, they did not do anything about it since they didn't know for the better part of two decades. After which, as soon as they found out, they thought it'd be better just to leave it alone since it isn't, there's basically nothing they can do and it's been, well, 20 years since it's happened. The second case I'm gonna to talk to you about is of a man named John Moore and his doctor, uh, David Gold. David Gold was a scientist at scientist and doctor at UCLA Medical Center. He got a patient named John Moore. John Moore complained about some abdominal problems. After diagnosing Mr. Moore with a type of spleen cancer, he later took a sample from him. In the same, almost the same way that George Guy found out later that his cells could be potentially used for finding new ways to treat spleen, spleen cancer, he realized he can also make a profit from them. Though this was a little bit more modern time, around the 1980s, um, he did have to fill a consent form. However, the consent form clearly labeled out that he wanted all the samples after they were tested and helped them to be diagnosed to be burned and cremated. However, the doctor lied to Mr. Moore and told him that he needed to come back every single year just for follow-up treatments. He would then also make him sign consent forms for each time so he can take more samples and send them around the world, as George Guy did. However, Moore found this very strange since that oftentimes he would be sent out in almost style, and Dr. Gold would do almost anything he could to make sure he got out here. If he couldn't make it that week, he said, oh, you have to come the next week. And if not, he would make sure that he got like a first class ticket, he would pay for his meals while he was down in Southern California since uh, Mr. Moore lived in Washington. And Moore found this a little bit strange, especially when one time he, re he decided that he was not going to fill out consent forms since he's already filled out so many over the course of several years. Moore found this very strange, especially after Gold very specifically said that you have to fill out this consent form, you have to fill it out. Moore didn't really find much about the, any of the consent forms, so after he took a good look, he realized that there was a small and fine print label saying that he was potentially going to use the samples taken out of him for commercial use and potentially for a profit. So at this point, Moore realized that he needed to get a lawyer. Though Moore did take uh, gold into court with this, and he even went to the Supreme Court, Moore did not win his case over trying to get into settlement, a million dollar settlement for his cells. However, he did win over the fact that over the first meeting, more, uh, Dr. Gold did not uh, probably tell him 
that his cells were not being cremated afterwards. So he only got a settlement of about $300,000, which I mean is pretty good, but at the same time, the consent and trust of the doctor was basically broken at that point. Now, what does that mean for people like us here and today? Well, there's two things you have to really think about. Obviously, if you can make money off your own body, that's kind of cool, but at the same time, you also have to think about the morals, or the morality about it. When you sell or find a potential use for part of your body or part of your sample, obviously we want to you know, try to make money off of it. More money, the better, right? But at the same time, it also hinders the progress of the medical field. Like Henrietta Lacks, the family decided that they would not press any charges towards George Guy since he basically helped people cure polio, helped new ways of mapping genes. Scientists now know what happens to cells over radiation. It's done nothing but good. So there is that. However, what you can do today when you go get your next blood test or whenever a sample is in from your body, the simplest thing you can do to protect yourself in the case of George Moore, or John Moore, you can basically just talk to your doctor or whoever's taking your sample and ask what's gonna happen to your blood, what's gonna happen to the sample of tissue, what's gonna happen to whatever is taken out of my body and done to it after it leaves. That and also reading the consent forms. And this, two things can possibly happen. If you become the next cure for the next and the most harmful disease, you'll feel a lot better about yourself knowing that you potentially help millions live. And if not, and if they scammed you and potentially made thousands or millions of dollars off you, you have a very viable case for a court. Thank you. Q, what did you think? Um, I like his introduction. I like the fact that he didn't really look down as much as most people did today, so that kind of kept me involved somewhat. Um, I noticed he kind of likes to move backwards when he speaks sometimes, and he, he kind of stays in the same spot. Like he had his arms like this the whole time. Like, I don't know what that was. But, <laughs> but he had a pretty... He had a good voice, he had a good pitch and good tone. He kept the same voice to the whole the whole speech. He got real good details. He went in depth in everything he said about the lady when she or her vagina, stuff like that. He went real in depth. Damn, what I missed. <laughs> you don't really want to. It's not, it's not what you think. <laughs> right, it was pretty good. He had good eye contact. Well, not really eye contact. He, Focused on you most of the time, but he never looked down. So I think that was pretty good, and uh, that, was, that was pretty much good. All right. Yeah. What was the speech on? That's <laughs> what I'm saying. So, Rights so. to uh, <laughs> your medical, your own medical waste. Not vagina. <laughs> no, <I'm saying. laughs> Just one of the <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? Henrietta Lacks. <laughs> Henrietta Lacks. Henrietta Lacks. There's a oh, famous book about yeah. this. So where the vagina is coming from? Uh, there was, uh, yeah, it was. She had cancer. She had cancer, yeah. and uh, she bled from her vagina after having treatment. So, it, like I said, it doesn't sound all that interesting after you hear that. You know, you know. <laughs> all right. Vagina talk. <laughs> Man, and I miss that, yeah. No, I... <laughs> it's a little awkward. Voices, uh, I think you've got an interesting topic here. It sounds, 90% of it sounds like it's an informative speech, you know. This is, a, this is an interesting subject, uh, that these events happened, that, that's uh, interesting, um, and the, that they're important. I think that that's, there's something to be said there. I'm just wondering, how often does something like that happen? I mean, you've got two 
well-known cases. Now, if there are, if this, if they use ninety percent of the medical excess waste, whatever you call it, you know that kind of thing, for these kinds of tests and that sort of thing, then maybe every patient should be worried a little bit about this. But these sound like they are pretty exceptional situations and circumstances. And uh, the first one, so, you know, historically and in context. Nobody's. I don't know that anybody's thinking about that kind of stuff, and it's just one of those things. The second one definitely sounds like there was some manipulation going on there. There was a, there was an intentional misleading of the uh, patient, and there's something going on. So there is an argument I think here that says that there, there's a moral line that's being crossed, that there's something that's wrong here. But you make it sound like we should all be worried. You know that our our blood, you know, every blood sample that we give, every uh, you know test that we have done, every mole that gets removed, every you know, uh, time we spit sideways, you know, we ought to be thinking, hey, there's a potential million dollars that's going into somebody else's pocket because I expectorated into their, you know, Petri dish. And I, that sounds to me like it's a big stretch that's going on there. Like I said, it sounds to me more like it's an informative speech about this interesting situation or circumstance, but I'm not sure how important it is when it comes to medical research. What percentage of medical research is based on this kind of... Um, material, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, do people have to acknowledge it? I just, and I'm sorry, you know, it's one of those things, because I listen to so many presentations, I get exposed to a lot of different information. I had a speech uh, a month ago about the use of fetal tissue from abortions or miscarriages and that sort of thing, and there's a lot of stuff in there, but there's a People have to sign consent forms, and they, you go through a whole process on that. And of course, we had that whole Planned Parenthood thing that was going on also that's part of that process. And so the idea that people are not aware of this or uninformed, I'm not sure that there's that that's true. So you need to build a little bit uh, bigger argument here, and it needs to be tighter because you, you get kind of sidetracked in telling the stories and going into the details. I know some of that you want to talk about the emotional component and I'm not sure that you always get to the emotional part. You tell the story but it's, it, it, I'm not sure you're getting to the essence of the story as quickly as you need to and, and I think you get a little bit lost along the way. That's to me the biggest issue in the presentation is that you've got a subject that's interesting but it's not necessarily an argument and it's interesting but it, if you're going to make a claim based on those things you need to get to the point a little bit more effectively. You do a nice job speaking to us. I think that we've talked about that before. You usually are, are talking to us pretty directly and engaged with us, so I don't have any criticism with what Hugh was saying about your delivery. I think that that's true. I just think that the content is a little bit problematic here. All right, thank you. Jeez, that's gonna be a 20